I'm super, super elated to be with you guys once again. Uh, if you just joined us, be reminded that you're watching the Liz Talks show. And my name is Liz. This week on Liz Talks, I bring to you another intriguing, exciting personality. Uh, he's bold, outspoken. Uh, he's passion-driven. I mean, he has the youth at heart and the nation at large. You know, this man is a man of integrity. Even though he has a lot of speculations around him, back and forth, you know, we're here today to dig into his life and have a chit chat with him as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back as we get into the life of Ahmed Abubakar, popularly known as Black Rasta. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Right, welcome back. I have with me here Ahmed Amubakar. Black Rasta is my guest for this week. Welcome, Black. Thank you so much. It's great to have you here. Same way. Nice, nice, nice to have. How is your show going, though? Yeah, yeah, good. Positive. Mm. Mm. Are you a Christian? Christian? Wow. I'm a follower of Christ. I'm not a Christian. Why do you say that? Yes, I'm not a Christian because um, the kind of definition we have for Christians mm -hmm. is not that kind of person. I'm not that, that kind of person. You see, going to church every Sunday, paying tight mm -hmm. and doing all that. <laughs> I don't do any of those. You see, yes, I'm not, I'm not a Christian. And, you know, when Christ was even here, mm -hmm. he never called his people Christians. It was after he had left when you read that in the book of Acts, it says, oh, they met a certain people. Okay. And those group of people said, that, ah, who are these people? They are those following the Christ. They are the Christians. So some other people outside Christianity name Christians Christians. Okay. I prefer to look at myself as a follower of Christ, the example of our great ancestor, African ancestor, Jesus Christ. You see, that is the kind of person I am. I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in what happens now in these modern times as Christianity now. Mm. Yeah. And do you believe in prophets? Yes, I do. I believe in prophecy and I believe that God speaks to almost everybody. It just depends on how you tune your ears to listen to the shrill voice of God. Everybody can hear the voice of God, mm -hmm. depending on how you tune yourself. It's like a radio station, TV station. When your dial is on the dial of God, you would hear the voice of God. I believe that there are people who have raised themselves to that level, mm -hmm. and they are able to hear the voice of God. Do you have a problem with Nigel Gezi? No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. I don't have a problem with uh, Prophet Nigel Gezi. I mean, he's been somebody that... Uh, has mentored me for okay. a period until I decided that, well, it was time to walk out. Because we grow. You cannot be in class one forever. Okay. You have to go to class two, move on and on and on. Yes. So you just grew apart? Yes, yes. I just, I just thought that, well, I've had enough training. I've learned enough. It's time to move out. And then I moved on. Well, so what's your take on him glorifying fraud? Sorry? What's your take on him glorifying fraud in his church? He made a prophecy. Well, I think I mentioned it uh, on my show. Yes. I mean, we do not, we do not uh, support anybody who uh, glorifies criminality. Okay. When I saw that video mm -hmm. that Prophet Nigel was talking about, I mean, fraud and almost glorifying it, I was so disheartened and... I called him to find out from him, ah, did you say this? He said, no. You know, so I was so down because this was not what we stood for when we were together in the church. Okay. We didn't stand for fraud. We didn't stand for criminal activities. 
And for you to be telling somebody, oh, yes, there's a woman, a white woman that you are taking money from. And blah, 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 blah. Bring this amount of money and it's going to happen. For me, I saw it as very low. Even though later he called and said that was the wife of the guy he was prophesying to. For me, I thought that that was an afterthought. He just thought about it and wanted to do damage control. So That's what think, I you think. You think he's not being real? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, he wasn't being real on that day that he was talking about, oh, this was what you said. We all understand what you say when you exactly. say what you say. Because the video was even out there. The video was out and, you know, he was trying to do damage control. I mean, which I thought was not right. Mm -hmm. mm. But people think you are against men of God. People have the notion that you're against men of God. I think that I'm against the system. Mm -hmm. I'm against the system. And the system is controlled by the so-called men of God and politicians. Yeah. You see, who is a man of God? Nobody is a man of Satan. We all are men of God. And if you tell me that you hear from God, and I see that the activities you are portraying, they are negative to what God himself stands for, then you are not a man of God. Anybody who derides, anybody who pulls back the growth of the youth, we fight those people. Because it's not about us. We are thinking about the next generation. We are thinking about how people can get better. Hmm. Then you will come in the name of your God. You are causing so much confusion. People are fighting each other. The so-called men of God are throwing insults at each other. Exactly. Profanity all over. We cannot support that. So I fight those people tooth and nail to get them out and bring proper people who, I mean, understand what God stands for. It looks like you stand alone in this agenda that you're pushing, do you think you can make it? Sometimes you have to stand alone, trust me, in order that you would have your peace and be able to do what you do. Bob Marley said, one manna walking and a million more are sparking. Okay. It takes one man to start a revolution. You will start it and other people buy into the idea and then they jump on the bandwagon. That, that's how it normally works. So when I stand alone, I feel good because I will now have to go about trying to win souls for that kind of movement. And luckily, any time I start anything like that, I see a lot of people coming on board, understanding the whole philosophy. You see, if you want to be supported by everybody, then I, mm -hmm. I am, I'm afraid that you are not being smart. You are not being smart at all, because in these times, when everybody supports you, it means that you are doing the wrong thing. Hmm. Some have to fight you. Some people make money from war. So if you are preaching peace, they would have to fight you so they can bring their war and sell their weapons to you. Okay. So if you preach peace and they embrace you, it means their weapons are not going to sell. Mm. See? So I normally like to stand alone. And when I stand alone, it makes me think better. Because we have a lot of people who tell, oh, wait, what they are doing is good, what they are doing is good, they are fake. So when I'm alone, I'm able to go into my own self, my inner self, and project myself above these small minds and get better. Well, one would ask what it takes to be a Rastaman. Is it just the dreadlocks or there's more into being a Rastafarian? Yes. Yes, to be a Rasta, first and foremost, is to be the follower of Haile Selassie. Okay. And Haile Selassie came in the line of King David, 225 in that lineage. And Haile Selassie himself of Ethiopia was a follower of Christ. Ayasos, Christos, Jesus Christ, Yahshua, Hamashiach, all those names are just translations from different, different, different people. He was a follower of Yahshua, Hamashiach. You see, so being a follower of Haile Selassie simply means following what Haile Selassie followed. So therefore you are a Rastafarianist. I am. And yes. you believe in the agenda. Yes. Do you think this whole thing you are doing, you know, is making impact? especially on the youth. Looking at you, you are a man that has the youth at heart. Do you think you can make it? Do you yeah. think it will make an impact? It's already making so much impact. There's no following that is greater than this following. Look, we went out there, we were evangelizing. They said, don't demonstrate. We said, okay. <laughs> we are evangelists now. <laughs> we are standing on the street with placards okay. like some other people do. Jesus is coming soon. Get ready. A, a, a Holy Ghost is talking. Listen well. We also stood on the street and said, fix the country. Hey, we stood on the street and said, no old man should be president anymore. And all that. All the youth came out. 
and it made a very powerful impact. We have a movement called MAD, Movement Against Disorder. Okay. You should see the following. Wow. The people who are ready to support. It's crazy. Okay. People are tired of these old men in power. People are tired with the greed. People are tired with the wanton pilfering of the economy. They are leaving no future for the youth, and that kills me. Because somebody else struggled and fought to see me be where I am. Exactly. It is my duty to raise it a bar higher or even two, not to bring it down. Okay. And what I see happening is this. You hear president flying all over the place, paying 15,000 pounds exactly. to fly for an hour. Yeah. He wants a shower in his plane. He wants a whole bedroom structure in his plane. And they just started another propaganda yesterday. Nigerian president came with his private jet. He had two showers inside. Ivorian president came. He had two showers. Hey. Nigerian president came. His plane could take about 20 people and blah, 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 blah. Silly propaganda. It hurts me. It kills me. Is it, would you say it's a problem amongst the African race, the black race? Do we have a problem? Exactly. Exactly. Now, if you look at the history of corruption, it started with a white man. When we were here and doing our own thing, doing our, we knew that, hey, if you steal this thing, Logo Po will catch you. Yeah. If you steal this thing, that will happen. When the white man came, he we told that all those so. gods are useless gods. They don't have any sense. They only drink uh, schnapps and that's all, appetition and the rest. So what you have to do right now is follow my God, who is the God of the Bible or the God of the Quran and so on and so forth. Now they saw the people who brought God to us raping our own mothers. They saw the people who brought God to us, stealing our gold and our diamonds and all that. At the end of the day, they say, ah, if this man tells me he's closer to God and he's doing all these things, then it's right for me to do that as well. They also started stealing and raping and all that. That was how we got corrupted on that scale. You, you, you see? Yeah. So it has corrupted us so much. The white man has even moved out of that corruption mm -hmm. because of pressure here. and sacrifice. We are still in that rot. Exactly. And sometimes I, I wonder, I'm thinking, I'm like, ah, what is happening? We used to think that old men were so sharp and devoid of all corruption exactly. and they were good enough to let things well, happen. Thanks, you know. Until recently when we started realizing that a lot of these old men are nothing but thieves. Exactly. A lot of these old men around are, don't even have brains. Look at Cameroon, Paul Bia is president. He sits in a wheelchair, goes to the toilet in his wheelchair. He has two people who clean him down. and put diapers on him. He's president. Ask him eight plus one. He has to get a calculator. His hands are shaking, shaking. Who are we? Who, who, uh, where are they leading us to? The grave? Where? So we look at these things and we're like, the younger people have to, be, have to lead. And I have started a certain advocacy. We do not want career politicians in power anymore. Somebody whose career is to be a politician. He will do whatever it is to remain in business. And that business is politics. They pay people to talk, not to think. So at the end of the day, these guys are those who are in power. And all they are doing is to keep themselves in power so they can eat. How can they think about you? But if we had honorable men, people who are not career politicians. Exactly. Like Kwame Nkrumah. And those other wonderful people, Magufuli, who just died. Wonderful people who think about the people, a little about the youth. Then you realize that, no, the country can get better. Not these guys. Career politicians are all over the place. And they are those killing us. But with this Fix the Country agenda, there was this young girl, MC Yeboah. She's also uh, a youth coming up. And she, was, she said she was being threatened just because... She started, you know, propagating the message and telling people, opening the eyes of the youth. Do we have, you know, a voice? Do you think the youth can stand up? Because if somebody has started and already receiving threat messages. That, that well, well, all they can use is fear. And when you have fear, you can never go anywhere. Fear is the biggest setback for humanity. When you fear, you can never make it. The man who went to the moon had to conquer fear to reach there. The man who had to do the first thing that became historical had to defy fear and get into it. You see, mm -hmm. I've been threatened too, time and again. A gunman came here trying to shoot me. 
He was shot right here in, in our compound. Yes, uh, how was it like? Well, I mean, I was in the studio doing my thing, contributing my quota to humanity. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, the light in the studio went off. And my producer came in saying that, oh, there was a man who had come. He was panting. Mm. A man who had broken security and was looking for me, was shouting my name. So he wanted me to leave the studio. You know? Well, long story cut short. Mm -hmm. uh, before I could even think about going, uh, the whole place, people were running left, right, and center. And were told that the man jumped from the back there and was trying to escape and he was gunned down right there. Wow. He was gunned down, and they took him to the hospital. The police came here and took him to the police hospital. That evening, we got information that the man had escaped. A man who was shot and was unconscious and was lying down here. Carried into the police vehicle unconscious. Took him to the police hospital. Police people were there. He was not handcuffed to his bed, nothing, and then he escaped. Do you believe that? Well, politicians can do anything, and on this journey... We are ready. You see, we are ready. Because if you want to count on them, you will not do anything. You see, they would always visit you with fear in order to hold you back. To break the chain of fear would mean you moving forward and succeeding. The youth are beginning to have a very strong voice. Yes. The internet is alive. Social media is hot. Every coward can now go on social media and put out something. And that is what is happening right, right now. They just need a little bit of strength and the youth are up and doing. Don't you fear for your life? My life is so precious. But what is more precious for me right now is the life of the next generation. My life is only one person's life. If one man would have to go down for a million more people to be saved, so be it. You see, a plane is about to crash. We have a hundred people up there. And if one man jumps out of it, or one man sacrifices his life, the hundred people can be saved. What are you waiting with your life? Hmm. Let the life go and save the hundred people in there. Look at what Jonah did in the Bible. When the ship was, you know, being tossed up and down and blah, 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 everybody was crying. What does the Bible say? It said that. They went up to Jonah and said, ah, everybody's crying and calling his God. You are here snoring. Get up when he got up. He said, you know what? The problem is me. Put me inside the sea. They didn't want to do it, but at the end of the day, he sacrificed himself and there was calm. I believe in that. We are not ready to sacrifice. One soldier can hold one gun here with only one bullet in it. And a million people are standing there. He says, the first man to move, I'm going to shoot you. And there is something behind the soldier that is so much of importance for the generation. Everybody fears that one bullet. Nobody will make the first move. Yeah. Even if you knew he had only one bullet. Now, nobody wants to be the first person to be shot. Take that sacrifice so that other people can benefit from what you lay down your life. If there was nothing like sacrifice, you believe in Christ. You say you are a Christian. You believe that Jesus laid down his life, was crucified because of you. Why you don't want to sacrifice for another person and you are selfish. What happened to Kwame Nkrumah? What happened to the rest of them? They sacrificed to see us where we are to today. No sacrifice, no success. Hmm. That's deep. Let's talk about your humble beginnings. Where did Black Rastal grow? How? From where? From which town? Where I was born? Yes. Your parents. Let's talk about the whole life journey. My life journey, wow, it's a very short one. Mm -hmm. I've not achieved anything. What it is, is I was born on the second day of September 1974. Mm -hmm. And that was a Monday. I was told it was 7.20 p.m. And I weighed 5.5 pounds at birth <laughs> at the Tamale Hospital. Oh, wow. That was when I was born. And uh, I lived my life in Tamale all the way through. Went to school in Tamale. Then went to school in Kumasi as well. Okay. You know, and I found myself here right now on radio and doing some other things in the service of God and country. And was radio your dream 
Did you see yourself doing radio or even <laughs> music? In fact, I, want, I started out as trying to be a doctor. Okay. Because in my area, doctors were so respected. They were like demigods. So I wanted to be a doctor. That I was studied in Tamale. Science. Yes, in Tamale. Mm -hmm. People wanted to be doctors. And if you had a doctor in your family, hey, it was like, a, you know, a bourgeoisie family. <laughs> you know? So, well, I started off like, like that. But along the line, my interest started changing. Yes, my interest started changing. When, I, when was that? How old were you then? Well, I think that right after secondary school, okay. Tia Mother Secondary School in Kumasi, okay. I started showing more interest in literature, reading about African experiences, the lives of Africans and all that. Mm. And I threw the science away quickly. I was not interested in it anymore. So did you change course? Yes, I did. Okay. I did. Uh, from O level, I left the sciences and went into the arts. Okay. And there I studied geography, economics, and French. Okay. That was what I did at A level. Okay. And then I was more interested in history and all, all that. Mm -hmm. And then Rasta came in. And when Rasta came in, it raised me to another level of consciousness. And from that time till now, it's been like that. Doing Pan-Africanism, going around, spreading the message of peace and love and self-pride, you know? So that's what I've been engaged in all this while. Your first album, mm. Rasta Shine, was uh, released somewhere in 2000. Yeah, 2000, yes. April. April. How many albums do you have to your credit right now? I think right now I have, I have 10 albums. If I have 11, the 11th one will be coming out soon. Mm -hmm. I have 10 albums right now. In all? In all, yes. Any awards? Yeah, well, a number of awards. Until recently, I pulled out of all the awards. Why? Yes, because I realized that they are buying the awards. I mean, how do you nominate me for an award and tell me to vote? But that has been the scheme, like... I like one. that. That has been the same corruption that has been flowing. That's what you just said. I mean, you have... You say that this lady deserves an award. Okay. Two other people deserve an award. Put up a board. Let them sit and decide and vote amongst them who they think is the best. Include the people out there. Do interviews. Okay. Find out by random sampling who deserves the award most. See, rather than saying, oh, if you want Black Rasta to win this award, short code 1122, and then text, and when you text, they take 50 pesos from you. And then when I don't win the award, say, oh, your people didn't vote. Too. It means your people didn't contribute enough to buy the award for you. Okay. They are now buying the award. They are now, the voting is not even free. You have to pay. So they give the award to the highest bidder. Hmm. I pulled out of all those nonsensical awards, they don't make any sense to me. You understand? They are only... Look, Stone Boy recently, VGMA, what happened? Mm -hmm. He went there, and then he won the award. After there was a scaffold, mm -hmm. they said, return the award. What yes. did he say? I paid over 50,000 Ghana cities to vote for these awards. Wow. You won the awards? Give me back my 50,000. You know what that means? I bought the award by paying 50,000 Ghana cities. Give me back my 50,000 and take your award. Hmm. We need to come to that level of consciousness and understand everybody wants to be awarded. Then they clap for you and then you hold the award and tell the whole world that you've won an award. In fact, I think I've grown above that kind of thing. I tell my fans every time, instead of voting to buy me an award, contribute that money, let us go to a certain good orphanage or let's build a gutter somewhere or let's build a, a drain or let's fix some potholes in some area that is more meaningful to me than that wood or that plastic do you have any plans of becoming an mp or a minister president? mp wow that is too little for me you want MP. to become the nation's president president that's too little so what is your biggest dream my biggest dream is to go out there and touch people they and they are healed i want to go out there and prophesy to people what will happen my biggest dream is to be able to see who will be the best president at the time and handpick that presidency. You are the one going to lead the people. Like God told Moses that you will lead the people. Then they got onto the mountain and said, look at Canaan, but you will not get there. This is the one who will get there. That means you're not interested in politics. No, sir. Politics, no. But you are, you are preaching. 
you are pushing an agenda. Mm -hmm. If you, you need to get the power to do that. Good. Good. So if we are talking about power. Okay. Power is different from politics. Politics is when people use tricks. Poly tricks. A lot of tricks. To trick the people and use the people. That is politics. Power is when you are in a position that gives you an authority okay. to decide. That is power. Unfortunately, the way to power right now mm -hmm. is through politics, mm -hmm. which we are decrying and fighting. That's why earlier I told you that career politicians should never be part of this life. That's what I'm saying. So, do you, in other words, we need a spiritual person to lead the nation. Not necessarily. But, yes, spiritual is good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you didn't say religious. <laughs> Spirituality is different from religiousness. Religious, yes. Religiousness is, oh, you have to wash your hand ten times before you can go to God. Yes. If you don't wear clothes, this, you can't go to God. That's religion. Yeah. Spirituality is sitting down and I know I'm communicating with God. Exactly. It, it doesn't matter whether I'm sitting on the WC or I am on a ship. I am talking to God. Religion is when you have to wait for somebody to hold your hand and take you to God. Spirituality is when you know that you can walk into God's bedroom like you walk into your father's bedroom and talk to him. See? So if we have people who have that level of consciousness of spirituality, where they can hear God and know the principles of God and let the people pick up that, then we would have a better, 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 far better country. That means you will not steal. That means you will not do bribery. That means you will not be lazy. That means that you will not lie. These are the principles of God. I haven't heard one God saying that, oh, I like people to lie. I like people to steal. No God has said that. Hmm. No matter which God it is, the Hindu God, the Islamic God, the Christian God, all the gods we know are talking about chastity. Okay. Yes, that's mm -hmm. what it is. Let's talk about your recent release, Malam Tonga. Ah. What was the motivation behind it? Because it surpassed 1K stream on, you know, Tunko. What, what motivated you to bring out such a nice... Well, I just wanted to make an adult song. Okay. And, and an adult song that will be devoid of all the profanity. Okay. Just like, so I listen a lot to soccer. And when soccer people are talking about bananas and all that, they are not talking really about bananas. But it will take the adult mind to tell that, oh, there's another banana outside this banana. Okay. See? So that's the kind of music I made. At a time that the virus was ravaging everywhere, and I dropped it for people to loosen up and just feel the power of Malam Tonga. Malam Tonga. Why that? Good. Now there was a malam in a shaman called uh, Malam Ismail. Okay. But he later got to be called Malam Tonga because we heard that he was taking little, little Macaranta girls into his bedroom, hey. tongalizing them, <laughs> you know. So the Ashaman people decided to call him Malam Tonga. He hates that name a lot. The tongalizing is your word. Right? Yes, it's my word. Okay, that's right. You know, and that was that. So everybody called him Malam Tonga. So, I mean, when I made that song, I said, well, this is an interesting name. Why don't I use it just to represent anybody who has the power, I mean, to fire? You know, you know, Barack Obama mm. has been like your greatest hit. For somebody to sit and write such a beautiful song about a president takes a lot. What really inspired or motivated Barack Obama. Barack Obama was a miracle song. I think Angel sang that song long before I did it. Okay. And this was how it happened. I just come from Takrade, Hustler. Okay. And did my album. Ish. When I finished the album, I released this album. It was like nothing had happened. Nobody was even paying attention to that album. Hey, what is this? <laughs> album that I've gone to the studio worked hard to release. Nobody was minding the album. Oh, reggae crowd say, yeah. Were you frustrated, though? I was almost frustrated. <laughs> then we were in the house listening to GBC at that time. There was a man on it who later I got to, I mean, recognize as one can come with him. Okay. Yes, he was saying, yes. 
the politics in Ghana has to change. They have to do politics like Barack Obama okay. in the U.S. And that name hit me, Barack Obama. Hey, that name is like a magical Barack Obama. What name is this? I'd never heard it. Yeah. So, well, I said, let me just find out who this man was. Well, and let me make a song. And I started hearing mel melodies in my head. Mama, mama, come make me talk. Come, come make, make me talk, talk about Barack, Barack Obama. Obama. Some nursery rhyme kind of okay. melody. At that, on that day, there was a, a Rasta brother in the house called Ras Bumba. Okay. I sang the song to him. I said, Bumba, how do you find He's a master melody maker. How do you find He said, well, he's for children, Abby. Ah. It discouraged me. That comment discouraged me a lot. But I no. said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nesri Ryan. We forgot about it. I was walking that same day in the evening around my area there up the hill. When Zap Mallet came up, he said, Oh, Rasta, you know, say I move. I left that studio right now, day here. Oh. Come see the place. Come make we do song. He had moved, so people were not really going there when we went. He said, Rasta, you know, get song. I was almost going to tell him, Ah, but I produced a whole album with you. I released it just last two weeks and nothing okay. happened. You want me to do another song? Then I remembered that melody that was ringing in my ear and I started singing it to him. I was playing the piano whilst I was singing. He said, hey, Charlie, the song they build. The melody be nice, pal. Then he stopped. But that Barack Obama guy, you think he will win the election? Hmm. You think he will win? You know, primary self, you know, go win. Oh. That's what Zap said. And he is well read. He knew Barack more than even me. So we started sharing ideas. Wow. Whilst we were talking, I was also writing my poetry. Okay. Writing my poetry, rhyming my poetry. It took me about, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes to finish that. And then we sang the song, and that was it. I just kept it. One whole album didn't hit. Is it this one song which is going to hit? You then, didn't have faith. Yes. The next day I was on radio, and I remembered that I had made a song with Zap the previous day. I said, well, let me just play so that people would hear that. Black Rasta self makes song give black man. I played the song, and ah, hmm. when I played it the first time, calls. Wow. Why you no, no. Whose music is that? Hey, play them again. That day I played it like five times. Wow. Cantamanto started calling me. I had to go out and cut CDs immediately. The wow. CDs were going like water in a flat. People were buying the CDs like crazy. One song. Look, I cut CDs for Cantamanto to the point that I didn't want to cut any CDs anymore. Wow. Was, the money was coming like, ah, is this a joke? Can I wake up from this dream? Wow. Money. I was seeing money that I had never seen In all my life. life. Just coming. And people were still calling. Hey, then Barack won the primaries. Oh, God. <laughs> when he won, the money was even more. Hey, what is this? Americans were calling. I was sending seed, shipping CDs almost every time. Wow. Barack, that one song, it gave me money like I had never seen. I think that it's been the biggest selling single ever in the history of this country. Exactly. It's arguable. Before I realized it was on CNN, Al Jazeera, ah, what is happening to me? Hmm. You know, then I heard some people saying that, Juju, hey, these songs are what they inside. Eh, just talking, 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 talking. They don't understand poetry. You know, but to God be the glory, Barack came here. And when he won the elections final, I saw him using the song in Germany. They were playing it and he was dancing. I said, hey, hey you're fat. right now they are fat. <laughs> <laughs> then he won the elections. I said, my God, I've missed. When he won, the sales increased. At this wow. point, I want to thank uh, Kofi Kumbilson. Wow. He played that song for one year every day. Oh. Every day he played it for one year repeatedly he loved it and i had never even met him really oh my no payola no nothing i had never even met him not even a conversation on phone i didn't even have his number one whole year when obama won he said he was coming to ghana mm -hmm. and we laughed we knew why he was coming to ghana but of course the politicians as usual will try to stop you because they said i was loud mouth we were kasakura on kasanyan that so they didn't want to then Mahama was the vice president 
And uh, I remember Abedi Pele approached him and said, Ah, what are you guys doing with Black Rasta? Are you going to? He said, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See Zita. Then Zita was information minister. Mm -hmm. And tell her that I said she should give you an invitation. I've spoken, I will speak with her. Okay. Then, well, interesting. The government invited me to the information minister's office that they wanted about how many copies? He would, 50,000 copies of the CD. Wow. Because Barack was coming and they wanted to share it all over the place. After meals, share it all over the place. People would play and listen and they wanted Barack to arrive in the country and the song was all over the place. But greed. Hmm. Greed. Who was I? A simple Rasta man from somewhere coming to sit here with my locks. You, you want to enjoy Barack? Rasta man. They did it. Chuku, 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 underground, because I don't deal with politics. Mm. Politicians came in. I remember Abeku Santana, okay, he apologized, and normally I don't like to mention him, but the story cannot be complete without exactly. mentioning him. Exactly. They went underground. The first meeting, I was there with Bola Ray, Abeku Santana, uh, uh, this piece of him guy, uh, what's his name? Fifi Banson. Yeah, they were all in the meeting, and they said, yeah, cut the number of copies. My sister, I ordered for the cutting of the copies. I called my mother and said, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. 50,000. 50,000 copies. You know how much each one is? I'm going to make money like Bill Gates. Oh. My walking changed. My talking changed. Your walking changed. Everything about me changed. I started looking at the rented house I was in. All right, I will build another one, at least structure, something like that. Look. Then I started hearing. Hey. That, hey, that song says it's a racist song. In the song, he talked against homosexuals. And, uh, you know, it cannot represent the country. From our own Ghanaian. Fifi Banson said it in the meeting. Oh, God. And I said, ah, the author of the song is here. Can I sing it to you? But then and have you ordered for the 50,000? Sorry? Have you ordered for the 50,000? That was when they said I should order for the 50,000. Oh, okay. So when I said it, then Zita said, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You go and do the thing. So when we came out of the meeting, I now ordered for the 50,000. Okay. And they were cutting, busily cutting, night and day. Oh, I wasn't hearing from them anymore. Ah. I didn't know. Oh, 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 we'll get back to you. Please, we'll get back to you. Hey, Sikana Hey, what is happening? Ha! Sikana No, it's occurring to me like yesterday. Then I realized that Abeku Santana had gone to quick action and they had also made a new Obama song, hey. which was sponsored by the same Ministry of Tourism wow. to replace my song. And what they did, they went around picking popular DJs. I remember Doreen Andor was part of it in the video. Hey, Obama, Obama, Obama in the video. Mm. And I realized that, okay, so the day that Fifi Banson said, this is a racist song, these other guys who are politically connected, me, I'm not. Mm -hmm. They've gone underground and they've taken the contract from me. Oh. How did you feel? So though? be it. Well, it was terrible. I went on radio and I made noise about it. Zita got angry. She also went on Peace FM, I remember. The Black Rasta Royal and True Four Power. I remember her tree. We <laughs> didn't tell him to cut any of this. We told him we'll get back to him and he went ahead to cut the thing. Mm. And they asked her, then why did you take the contract from him? I said, oh, Papa, no. For him to go and do another song and somebody who's not known to be a musician anyway. But it's all in the past and it went like that. Well, they say, who job bless, no one cares. Exactly. I went to Cape Coast because they said Obama was going there. Mm -hmm. And I went there waiting. I just wanted him to appear and I go out and say, me, I'm new. Oh. I did that song. My people don't want me to see you, but I've seen you. It's okay. I got the cameraman ready. When you see me approaching Obama, no, click, 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 click. <laughs> so we were in Cape Coast. That day I performed. My heart was heavy because I knew I was in debt. My sister, when we finished, go with me to my house. The CDs are still packed there. To date? They are there. 50,000? Yeah, yes. They are there. 
with time some of them got broken and blah but a chunk of them are there i'm just waiting for you to say oh i'll pay for them then i'll load them to your house it's hey, crazy this is they are maddening. there look i got to cape coast we performed and i was waiting in the night when everybody was sleeping i was outside and i was just thinking ah this country is so ungrateful. Should I continue being in this country? Yeah. Why don't I just leave and forget about these criminal-minded people? I was just thinking when my phone rang. I picked it. Hmm. It was Haruna Idrisu. He said, ah, Obama came. You know Obama came. He's asking of you. I said, really? Me? Obama is asking of me. Hey, please come. Where are you? I'm in Cape Coast. I'm coming. My sister. I've told this story over and over. I'm going to cut it sharp. So I left Cape Coast now in my car. Huh. Down. When I came that day, they had closed all the roads in Accra. All the roads. Accra was tight. Hmm. But when they saw me, everybody, I mean, this is the people's man. Hey, Obama, Obama, people even forgot my black rasta name. Obama, black Obama, black Obama, left, right, and center. And wow. I was just police saluting, soldier saluting. Hey, I went, and then they gave me the chance to enter. And when I went there, was Obama. They closed the door after I entered. Bafu Boni, he just passed on recently. Uh -huh. He played a very, very big role. And uh, 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 Mr. Smith. So when we got there, my sister, remember I was sitting outside thinking. I had not even taken my bath. No time. They said, come immediately. Just rushed I off. wore my jacket, big one, and I went and sat down in the corner. Everybody was wearing coat and tie oh. and slanging. I don't slang. I speak patois and pigeon. So I was sitting at the back like this. Then when they say, oh, Bama is coming, oh, Bama is coming, <laughs> pow, 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 21 guns solid. Rollins and his wife came in. Then at the mills, uh, then I saw Obama and his wife. They were also coming. We all had to stand. People were trying to take pictures and all that. And uh, he started to shake hands with people. Then so many hands were coming up. So he just now was doing this. He wasn't shaking anymore. Mm. Then he saw somebody in the corner there. Well, you know, quiet like that. He, so said, he just spotted you. And he saw my name written on my jacket, Black Rasta. Okay. He said, hey, my brother, come, 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 come. And I turned to say, who is that who is brother? That? <laughs> I stood up. I was the last you? person. Walked up to him. He embraced me and said, hey, your song catapulted me into victory. Oh. It helped me. To, hey, can I take a photo with you? Zita was standing there. Mm. Struggling to take a photograph. <laughs> and we took the photograph nicely. Al Jazeera, CNN. He took the CD. Hypocrisy of Ghanaians. Now, MPs, ministers were running. Do you have copies of the CD here? Do you have some of the copies? Do you have the copies? You, have the co you are coming to Obama meeting to buy my CD. Really? Eh? 50,000 are in the house. <laughs> you should have carried it. Can I bring some to your house? How many copies do you want? They want a CD there so Obama could autograph it for them. God. I turned and looked at Zita. And I looked into the sky and said, Ja, you leave. Obama spoke to me. Other things I might not even be able to tell you. And after that, Bafo Boni, may he rest in peace. He was CEO of Radio Gold. I gave him a copy of the CD. I have only four copies. I gave them out. And that was it. That's the Obama story. From that, we've kept in touch. Mm -hmm. And we are doing things. So did? Yeah, man. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, man. So, so how looking... many countries did you tour then? When the, the band? Well, when I went to so many different places. And everywhere I go, by the grace of the Most High, I meet the president of that country. That's a special grace. And I love that grace. I went to Israel. You know, went to Palestine, yeah. met with the president of Palestine. I met with Tabo Mbeki of South Africa. Wow. Went all the way to Guyana, met with the Guyanese president. Then I went all the way to, uh, which other country? Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Met with the great Robert Mugabe. Wow. And the list goes on and on and on. There's no country I go to and I say, I won't meet the president and I don't meet him. No. That alone gives me joy. Once I arrive, 
and I tell them, oh, I want to meet with the president. All they do is they Google me. They, the first thing they see is a photo with Obama. I remember when we entered Israel, they wanted to even send us back because, but when they Googled and saw the thing, they said, oh, wow, please. The Israeli president wanted to meet with us. That is my source of joy, that I represent the youth and I'm opening doors for the youth, doors that the youth would never have been able to open because they don't wear coat and tie. Yeah. And all these meetings, there was none that I went in with coat and tie. They were just dressed very yes. well. So to God be the glory, we are still in it, pushing hard and making things Do you happen. see yourself as a special human being? Yes. Yes, I'm very special. Hey, my dear, when a man and a woman meet, do you know the number of spermatozoa that are released? It's like a whole flood, like that. Only one, kick, and the rest of them fall unconscious and die. I am that special child. So your own is K. Yes. K penetrates. And that's it. That is me. And the mission God has put in, in front of me, I can't disappoint God. Money is not my focus. See, in fact, when I was younger, young girls even used to come and give me money to befriend them. Hey. That, yes, that was the grace. Young ladies, because in school I was exceptionally brilliant. Okay. So what I did... I would not even look their direction. They would come to me with gifts. Free. Yes, gifts. Yeah, it has changed these days too, maybe because I'm growing older. <laughs> and because right now I'm wearing a, a beard and all that. Maybe because you're married. Uh, uh, maybe. So how did you meet your wife though? Well, it's been good. It's been nice. I mean, I've been married twice so far. Mm -hmm. and the, the first, first one, one passed on in 2012, Sakina. And... Um, I have another one right now. I have four children, you know, to the glory of God, you know, and I think that will let it rest. They won't make more babies. We'll, we'll, it's okay. The world is too difficult. Make babies and unless I have a promise that they will come and change the world, then I can produce more. Hey. But for now, let's hold it there. Hmm. Your show, Taxi Driver, yeah. is thriving so well. Thank you. But is your main target audience just the youth? Well, I like that question. It's, it's beautiful, beautiful one. Your producer should give you more money for this question. Thank you. I'll tell you this. The majority of the earth is the youth. The old men, they are about to go. Is the youth that will come. And the interesting thing is that Africa is the youngest continent on earth. In other words, Africa has the most youth in terms of percentage. So if the youth are the future... Mm -hmm. It means Africa is the future. And if I am the leader of the youth, it means I am the leader of the future. It's mathematics. Hmm. See? So when you look at this, I want to concentrate on the youth because the old men know too much. Hey. They know too much. <laughs> that is why we are where we are. They're look, helping us. in our country, <laughs> you don't listen to young people. You have to listen to an old man before you say, oh, you've listened to advice. Exactly. No young man is qualified to talk to you. You understand? Mm -hmm. At the same time, no young man has the right to be rich in this country. They will slap Sakawa on you. They will slap fraud on you. Exactly. They will slap whatever nasty behavior on you. That is how you got it. But an old man can be as rich as whoever and it's all right. Hmm. We are changing that rhetoric. And don't underestimate the movement. Okay. Taxi Driver is the biggest show on radio, yeah. whether they like it or not. Exactly. They tried to kill it years back. But it's not something that can die. No, it cannot die. Because hatically, we have a lot of love and we back it with spirituality. That is why Taxi Driver has been alive all these years. It can't die. It's a one-man show. I go on the show and I blast from two to six. Other shows, drive shows, there's no drive show in Ghana that does not have a host and a guest. Yes. Sometimes two guests, three guests. And most of these radio stations still have DJs who play for the main host to talk. Mm -hmm. I play my own music. I do my own talking. I am my own host. 
I am my own guest. You are the Alpha and the Omega. By the grace of the Almighty. And the youth are my target. They listen to me and they love me and I love them. Because they see that at least there's a genuine heart that is ready to go along exactly. with them. Exactly. Right. So yeah. I heard your, your show is being hosted in total darkness. Wow. What, what's rational? How did you get this information? Hey. This is supposed to be coded information. It's, you know, coded, <laughs> but you know, it's out there. So. It's true. I mean, yes. once I get into the studio, everywhere goes dark. I make sure that all the lights are off. Because I get, in, you see, realize that this interview, I've not looked into your face directly. Yes. I'm a very shy person. So normally I would like to concentrate on the one who sent me. Okay. I'll see his face rather than looking at other faces. So when I get into the studio, everywhere is dark. And I am imagining that 10 million people are listening to me. And these 10 million, some of them are destitute. Some of them are sick. Some of them are poor. Some of them are going through terrible things by politicians and others and i need to speak with them you see that gives me that inner energy mm. and inner power to do that mm. so my studio is always dark okay dark it didn't start now i don't want people to come to look leg and then look at me hey charlie look at how he's doing his face mm -hmm. see how they do him off mm -hmm. see how they now i put it off and i'm in there because a lot of people used to do that some will even come and stand there and take photos of you and all that okay. in the past so darkness all over, and I'm in the dark communicating. Mm, so that helps you and it makes the show yes, go does. as it, you it want does. it to be. Yeah. What really led to you leaving Hits FM? Oh, okay. All right. Well, so, I mean, Hits FM uh, brought me from Happy FM. Okay. And my mission was to be able to build a program that was going to stand formidable around the time that Alaji and Alaji was airing, and Alaji and Alaji was the biggest thing at that time. So they gave me a probational period of about, I think, four months or so. Mm -hmm. And after the first month, they realized the thing was flying big. So they zoomed into the real contract, you know? Well, so we're firing, we're keeping the thing going. It's a firm, the brand was running beautiful because I had to take on that challenge. So, all of a sudden, there was a problem with uh, some MPs. Mm -hmm. What it was was that I was at home. I remember that day clearly. I had just finished taking my bath, and I was trying to rush to the studio. Okay. I had a towel around my waist. Mm -hmm. A call came from each hits of them. I picked it up. Oh, you know, today is World Marijuana Day, Ganja Day, hmm. and you are the face of Ganja in Ghana. Face so, of Ganja. Yes, face of Ganja in Ghana. Do you smoke Ghana. marijuana? Well, I'll get to that. <laughs> but you've not answered my question. Okay. No, I've never smoked. So why do they relate you? Because marijuana is not for smoking alone. Okay. We make shoes out of marijuana. Medicines are made out of marijuana. Are you aware that hemp has been legalized in Ghana? Yeah, for medicinal purposes. Yes. So, so that means he has other purposes apart from smoking. In fact, if I tell you what you can get from hemp and marijuana, you'll be shocked. Oil and all that. A lot of the hair creams ladies even use, kuza and all those, yeah. they're made from hemp and all that. Mm. You see? Anyway, so face of marijuana, and I'm so proud of it. Okay. Oh, we need you to give a comment. And then I said, oh, I just came out of the bathroom. Uh, let me come to the studio. So, oh, quick one. I said, okay. I remember it was Doreen Avio. Hmm. And I said, well, spoke about marijuana, the importance, pa, 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 finished. Then she asked, would you like to see it legalized in Ghana? I said, oh, of course, yes. Those who are supposed to legalize it, the parliamentarians in parliament, 80% of them even smoke it. Okay. That was that said. That was just what you said. Phone. And then some newspaper, mushroom newspaper, wrote about it. 80% of Ghana parliamentarians smoke in Tampe. And they added your name to and it. And they black raster. Hi. And one MP, he died. May he rest in peace. He <laughs> took it to parliament and told them that, hey, this man says we are all criminals because in Tampe is criminal in Ghana. And he says, uh, we have to bring him here. Mm. Long and short, I got there. And I realized that Hits FM got me a quack lawyer. Quack. A lawyer who was not even a lawyer. He was in law school. Yes, I've forgotten his name. I mean, it's been long, 2015. 
and he was the one who was supposed to represent me. He took a brother of mine whose name I would like to keep on the wraps. Because we said, hey, you know the lawyer way that people give you. He be my mate for school. Mm. He no be lawyer, he no qualify as a how. So I quickly called my lawyer, lawyer Tadio, sorry. And he said, let all the other lawyers rest. I will come with you. Oh. But they still presented that lawyer, quack lawyer. And when we got to the place, my lawyer asked, are you the lawyer? He said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. That be you represent him. I said, oh, really? So why did you want to bring me the, uh, like a sheep to the slaughter you. and say, call, say oh, two, no, no, call, or what? So my lawyer represented it. We did everything. And he told me, hmm. he said, Black, even if you have proof that all 80% smoke, you are still in contempt of the court. Exactly. If you apologize to these people, they will decide whatever punishment they are going to give to you. Whatever you do, the law does not free you. Hmm. If you want to be like Mandela, go and tell them, then you have to give proof there that you do it. that you'll be Mandela. They will lock you up in jail. When you come out, you become Mandela. Or, well, I didn't really mean to say this. All I meant to say was that 80% and over use marijuana, not smoke. Okay. Use is different from smoke. Smoking. Smoke is just one of the uses. I saw sense in what he said. And other things I might not be able to tell you, but we have some inner information, left, right, and center, say, blah, 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 blah. We can only support you when you... Interesting things. So when I went, I told them that, well, honestly, this was not what I said. I apologize for whatever was there. Hey, it was a whole drama in there. <laughs> Hits FM was there. Joy FM were all of them. They were there with their cameras on me. Hits FM. Yes, cameras and satellite to transmit live. What? Yes. After they brought me a quack lawyer. The station you went. And when I got in there, oh, all the other discussions they were not into. The moment they said, and black rasta, all the cam all the sleeping cameramen woke up and. Cameras were on. It was like Jesus was led to Pilate. <laughs> and I stood there. When I was walking in, I was even tired. I, want, I was crying oh. in my seat there. I can imagine. I said, hey, so is it because of me? All these people are, are, are wild like that. And that day, there was a big flood in Accra, coupled with some fire, and people were dying in Accra by us. Was it that day? That day. Wow. I said, why are people not even talking about this flood? One man. A non-entity. I don't exist. See how many tens of people, hundreds of people have died. Parliament is not discussing. It's discussing that somebody said 80% smoke. <laughs> if an apology will let your minds go back to the dying people, please take so the apology. It. I came out and one MP did this. Straight. I was coming to say, for all. <laughs> that's, that's like bling. I passed. I was going to the back. When the other guy, <laughs> some old man, <laughs> when he saw that, I was trying to pass in front of him, he did this. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, it was man. a comic relief for me. And somebody said, Tu no nu nina sa Another person said, And then, ubete wate. There was only one woman. She was speaking sincerely to me, and she told me, hey, represent yourself, you are okay. Yoni Kulendi was one of my lawyers. They freed the other man who talked about, Professor Dodu, who said the MPs were ignorant of, there was a disease that at that time, not COVID, some disease like that. And so they freed him and now said, Black Rasta would not be freed. Come! And when I went, I stood there. After they blocked me and did all they could, somebody said, so come. Left and right. I went and stood. Somebody said, you are not well dressed. Go back and dress well. Hey. Meanwhile, I was wearing kente mixed with something, something. And he was wearing suit. He was well dressed. I wasn't well dressed. Wow. He was representing England and America. I was representing Ghana. I wasn't well dressed. Well, I just went there. The Speaker of Parliament said, speak. Hmm. And I went to, 
some empty was standing, sitting next to me. You know, they all have microphones. Yes. So I held this microphone. Hey, God. So she didn't touch her microphone go, go, as go, well. Go to the back. Talk to my microphone. Ah. So I walked to the back. I mean, the video is there. You can check it out. Went to the back there. And I took the microphone. <laughs> the microphone was not working. Wow. I don't remember what happened. I think they brought me a microphone or something. I mean, six years now. Mm. And I gave my apology. And interestingly, the Speaker of Parliament, mm. Do Ajaho, and love and respect wherever he is. He said, after Bagbin and the rest of them have spoken, now Bagbin is the Speaker of Parliament. Even Bagbin that day said, I look at this man, and I feel his spirit. Oh. I think that I want him to go. He said, hey, no, 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 David. And said, well, this man has spoken. Those who want him to go, say yes. Whoa! It was like earthquake. Oh, Even ghosts were responding that day. <laughs> hey. The man said, well, the noise is too much. Can you show by hands those who want this man to, go. to be punished? He changed it. Okay. And then I saw about two MPs. Two hands. Two hands? Yes. Two hands. Ah. And then the, the uh, <laughs> Speaker of Parliament laughed and said, I veto this. I free this man. Wow. If he was going to follow those hands, that was a level of anger and hatred for one man. And that was the first time a man like me had been hauled before the parliament. Yeah. And when it was done, though Adaho made the most profound speech ever, what did he say? He said, you see this man standing there? I am his biggest fan. Wow. I listened to him religiously on radio. I was shocked when he said this thing. But he almost lost me as a fan. Now I am back as his biggest fan. Wow. The newspapers didn't write that. They wrote, Black Rasta apologizes to Parliament. Black Rasta is a coward. Black Rasta is blah, blah, boom, 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 boom. But the speaker saying that he is the biggest fan, not a fan, no, biggest, biggest fan of that man. It's like Pilate saying, I don't see anything wrong with Jesus. Jesus. Let him go. Say, so, oh, Barabbas, 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 free Barabbas, free. So the Free same thing was laying in, in your mind at the time. Yes. And I left. When I left, Yoni Kulendi said, I don't know if I should be saying this, he said, Black Rasta, I want to sponsor you to stand for MP ship. The kind of people who follow you. Yes. Tick, you will win. And I said, oh, with all respect, I'm not, I don't like politics. He said, how did you just get out of this? It's not easy. Yoni Kulendi told me to do something. I will not reveal this. Okay. Maybe 30 years to come. Damn. He said, when you enter into the hall, do A, B, C, D, E, F. I didn't. Because I saw it to be demeaning my personality. And I told them what I told them. And I was free. After that ordeal, <laughs> would, would that ordeal deter you from speaking your truth? I think it's even made it worse. I mean, you are here. I went away, I resigned from Hits FM. After that, I left Hits FM because they were playing some hypocritical game. They brought Okreku Mante in there and Okreku Mante was supposed to be the program's manager and blah, 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 some mixed up, mixed up, and I left. But from that time till now, you have realized that the fire has even become more. Oh, fire. You can try to douse it. But make sure it's totally quenched. If you leave the smallest sparkle, it will catch flame again. Right. So yeah. what are the new changes you're facing with regards to your audience preferences as compared to when you were on Hits FM? And now, now on Xylophone? Well, I mean, we always grow. I mean, if it's a mission that is backed by the Almighty, it can't fail. You know, a mission like my mission can never fail because... It is a selfless meeting. You're not thinking about your, yourself. You're not thinking about how many houses you built. You're not thinking about the swimming pools in your house. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about the next generation. Yeah. A, a man like that, you can't easily put him down. Okay. 
because he's on the agenda of the Most High. The audience share is growing over and over. Oh, my dear, I've been doing this for 22 years now. And it's reggae I've been playing and spewing consciousness to the people. As it stands right now, a lot of people that I started with have all retired. Or they are relaxed. Or they are put somewhere in the night to play some one hour. Or when people are sleeping, they should come and do their thing. But we are still playing prime time. When we talk, the foundations of the nation shake. Because we spew facts. When we talk, we don't talk ignorantly. We talk as if we know something small. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it was not by chance or for nothing that Robert Mugabe said, be my tourism ambassador when I arrived there. So many Ghanaians called the embassy here to find out, ah, is it possible for uh, a, a citizen of one country to be an ambassador in another in person's another. country? Because a lot of our people, unfortunately, do not support us. Do not support their own. Do you think that Ghanaians don't love their own? It's, it's, it's like a spirit that lives amongst us. It is true. It is very sad. When you go on the social media and see how Ghanaians attack fellow Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. They don't support a good man who is climbing. Not at all. They want to pull you down so you come and join them in their bonkers. I remember when I was lecturing at the University of North Carolina mm -hmm. and the University of, um, what is it called? Uh, UCM, University of Central Missouri. Lecturing is there for everybody to see. There were people who wrote to the university from Ghana, journalists, to find out if it was true really? that I was actually lecturing there. And some people were even teasing on social media that, oh, is he teaching Ganja studies there? Can you imagine? Because we don't go around flaunting certificates and saying, oh, this is what I have, this is what I have. We look at paper more than we look at brain. And you're currently doing your PhD in oil. Yes, yes. Oil and gas. Yes. And... God is so great. God is powerful. We continue moving on and on and on. As for certificates, we put them aside. Somebody has a plethora of certificates, no brains. Exactly. Somebody doesn't have a single certificate, but he's at, look at Krobo Edusei. Krobo Edusei was almost an illiterate, but he was a minister in Nkrumah's government. Yeah. Look at what he achieved. He had his weaknesses, but see his achievement. It's time we started looking at the brain, backed by the paper, but not only the paper. When we go for interviews, all their interests are CV. Mm -hmm. Oh, he has a, two PhDs. He has eight masters. Mm -hmm. And hey, wow, and they were being powerful. Mm -hmm. Electrical engineer, PhD, blah, blah. He cannot even change a bulb. <laughs> because our educational system trains people to do theory rather than practical. Exactly. That is why we have a lot of these gentlemen coming out of the university and they have a lot of knowledge theory-wise. But the practical science, they can't even invent a nail. Balloon self, they don't do. So we are changing the status quo. We are arriving there soon. Hmm. Finally, before I let you go, do you think the media is contributing to the fact that the youth is becoming so prone to money making, quick money making, quick money making? Do you think the media is playing a vital role in that? Media is always a very important tool. Unfortunately, uh, the bloggers, those who are blogging, we have the media houses that are quite traditional to us, that we know that they churn out nothing but the truth. Okay. But the new age of blogging by the youth, yes, you are very important, but I would love that they put a little bit of professionalism mm -hmm. into what they do. They are important, you see. Yeah. But the professionalism is not there. Some of them are even sponsored by Sakawa Boys. And they want their pictures out there and their girlfriends. Oh, he buy latest Lexus. In girlfriend be this, then they put in the grammar terrible. They've been airing this fetish priest. 
you know, money doubling people. Yes. And all that on TV. And, and it's on sad. TV. And it's all over the place. Yes. One malam is here. You move from this station to another station. Another, another malam. malam is there. Or comfort is eh? there. This is money doubling. It's a crime. What are the authorities? What are they doing? There is a Minister of Information, Minister of Communication, exactly. there is the NMC, there is this, there is that. Everybody. But we all sit back and all this rot is happening. You, you arrest one woman, a grada, and then <laughs> as if you have arrested every other Okonfo. You know, no, we can do better than this thing. Finally, Black Rasta, mm. your words to the youth. Finally. Well... The youth are so dear to my heart. I've been one before. Right now, I'm 46. Mm -hmm. The other day, I keep saying this. I was just 18. And I thought that I had all the years ahead of me. This time, I've become more soulful. I think and I go deep into my skin. Mm -hmm. I love the youth. I don't want them to make the same mistakes that I made. I want to be able to guide the youth to guide themselves. The youth, you are the majority right now. Yeah. Don't see every old man as wise. Some of them are fools. Do not see everything that comes of the state as gospel. Hmm. Some of it is demonic. Stand firm. You have your own brain. I advocate critical thinking. When you hear that this light is white, understand why it's white. Don't just take it hook, line, and sinker that is white. Question. Gain knowledge. Be just and run away from crime and corruption. That way, you would make it. But above all, know that there's an almighty. Get closer to him. And critical thinking. Use your brain. You have one. Thank you so much, Black. Bless it. it it's an honor seeing you and having a chat with you. I'm so elated. Thank you so much for coming. Bless it. Right. This uh, has been the end of this week's episode. It was Black Rasta in the house. You heard everything from him. I call him the Nkuma of our time. Uh, a bold, well-spoken and outspoken man. Uh, we pray that he stays long. Then he can continue to push his agenda and give we the youth the power and the strength to continue to fight for ourselves and the nation at large. This has been Liz Talks. My name is Liz. So we'll come your way same time next week. Don't forget that what is yours will always be yours. It can only be delayed, but it can never be taken away from you. My name is Liz. See you same time next week. It's a wrap. Bye. <laughs>